Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Kristen Jones and me at this Global Learning in Agriculture GLAG Creates event today. As part of this learning spotlight, Kristen and I will share with you how we are using Action Learning Program, Creative Koalas, Agricultural Themes, and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to give young people agency and voice. We're going to share with you how you can help your students create their own solutions to issues that are facing you and your communities. We're going to show you how you can show your students how they too can have impact, how they can build their networks and how they can learn new skills and so much more. Now, Kristen and I are coming to you from down under. My name is Lynn Strong, and I'm the National Program Manager for Action for Agriculture. My office is located 90 minutes south of Sydney in Darawa country. Kristen, on the other hand, and her school are located 90 minutes north of Sydney in Waramai country. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you a little bit about me and what motivated me to create Action for Agriculture. I come from a long line of dairy farmers. Growing up, my father had two mantras for his children. He told his eldest children, his daughters, to never, ever, ever learn to milk a cow. He told his youngest child, his son, that the firstborn son always inherits the farm. So as you can imagine, growing up, this little girl didn't have much confidence there was a future for her in the world of agriculture. So when I left school, I went off to university and I studied to become a pharmaceutical chemist. Now, as it so happened, I ended up back in my farming roots when I married a farmer. Now, this is the view from my front veranda. As you can see, it is magnificent. But when I came back to my farming roots, it wasn't just the vista that impressed me. I was absolutely fascinated by the high level of science and technology in the world of agriculture today. So I was determined to go on a mission to change the conversations around agriculture. I wanted little girls like me to see that there was a smart future for everyone in agriculture. In fact, today, 82% of careers in agriculture are found beyond the farm gate. In Australia, 40% of those careers are found in their cities. And I wanted agriculture to be perceived as a place where innovation, disruption, and creativity are fostered where careers with purpose are endless, where everybody works together to solve the world's wicked problems. Now, I wanna hear from you. We're speaking of world's wicked problems. We've created a Slido for you. And we, you, we would like you to join us in answering this question. Get your phones out, scan the QR code and tell us what social and environmental justice issues that you would fix, just one, the one that's front of mind for you, if you could wave your magic wand. So if you can tell us in three words or less, we'll have a word cloud of what are the most important issues to you. Tell us what's important to you. Beautiful, thank you. And as you can see, different things are important to different people. And we're all a product of our life experiences. And for us working in this space, it is so important to actually understand the wants and needs and pain points of the people that we are working with. As you can imagine, as a young girl growing up, getting the messages that I was getting, that there wasn't a career in agriculture for me, the audience that I was most keen to reach was young people. And Action for Agriculture has now been working with young people for almost 20 years. And we've been listening to young people and we've been asking them questions and they've been telling us 
that a lot more needs to be done to address the important issues facing the planet and how important it is to give them agency and voice. They told us if we could give them the tools, the resources and the support that they could come up with their own solutions. They told us that they would be able to take action if they had the right support. And of course, working with students, we've been able to work with teachers for the last 20 years, and they're also listening to their students. So we said to our teachers, what support do you need from us so you can empower your students? And they told us, give us the tools so we can get greater student engagement. Give us the tools so we can show these wonderful young people that they can link sustainability concepts to the actions that they can take in their local communities. And the other thing that I know that is really close to Kristen's heart is connect us with our local communities. We want to meet the experts already doing fantastic stuff out there. We want to support those people. We want to bring those people into our schools. We want to have them on speed dial. And most particularly, we want to have those people show us how they went on a journey to be part of a pathway that allows them to have a career with purpose. So this is how Creative Koalas was born. This program was designed to meet the wants and needs of all of the beautiful people that we are working with. Why do we use the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Well, they give us a framework for impact. They give us a common goal, a common language that we can all use to work together to get better outcomes for ourselves, our families and the planet. Why agricultural themes? Well, everybody who wears clothes, everybody who eats and everybody who has a roof over their head has a shared responsibility for walking as lightly on the planet as what they possibly can. So let's have a very quick look at how the program works. We give the students 10 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to investigate. We invite them to think about them, to talk about them, to write about them. And then we invite them to select one that's important to them and their region that they can create a community behavior change project about. And we invite them to design and deliver that community behavior change project. And we invite them to report back to us on it. We wanna know what data they collected, why they went in the direction they did, what worked, what didn't, what they do differently next time, what surprised them. And then of course, we give them a giant koala and invite them to use art to share their message with the wider community. So just summarizing that, we give the students a United Nations Sustainable Development Goal to investigate. This is a program about bringing bright young minds together, design thinking, all of the modern tools that is used in education today, design thinking, critical and creative thinking, communication skills. We invite those students to pick a goal that they're going to create a community behavior change project around. Then we ask them to think about what are the barriers? What are the problems that are causing you and your community to find it difficult to actually achieve this goal right now? And once they come up with those answers, we invite them then to actually deliver their project in their community. And of course, these magnificent artworks then become a permanent reminder to the students, to their community, and all of the students who come after them, how we can all be kinder to each other and the planet. Is it working? Well, everything we do at Action for Agriculture is evidence-based. We do extensive entry and exit surveys. At the end of the program, we invite our students to share with us via an open-ended question around four demographics, around themselves, around their peers, around their teachers and their families. We ask them to tell us, have you noticed 
you undertaking behavior change, your parents, your peers, and your teachers. And 96% of students were able to list 10 different ways that they had noticed all four of those demographics behaving differently. And that led our judge to declaring the program world class. In fact, he said it should be in every school in Australia. So speaking of Australian schools, I'd now like to invite Kristen Jones to share with us how her school is implementing creative koalas and the magnificent legacies that are happening not only in her school, but also in her local community, and also the beautiful charities that their school has identified that they are raising funds for. So thank you, Kristen. I look forward to you sharing with the community. Thanks, Lynn, and thanks everybody for listening with us today. So as Lynn mentioned, I'm coming to you from Warramai country, just north of um, Newcastle, a little bit further north than Sydney. Um, and we also acknowledge country before we present or we have an assembly. So these are just four of my students who'd like to share our acknowledgement of country with you. We are Barabai Yuti As a community, we acknowledge the Warramai people, the keepers of this country. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And we must always remember that on our same produce gardens, parks and playgrounds. Yeah, where am I at Google Bade, one you go, one you go, Ganyala, one you go, one you go, Gani. This is one of my country, always was, always will be. We're very fortunate at our school to have um, some of our students who are actually learning the language of the uh, Waramai people, the Gatung language, and these people are absolutely nailing those couple of lines of language in our acknowledgement, which I'm really grateful and, um, and proud of them. So we started our Creative Koalas journey in uh, 2020. And I have to say from the outset, I signed us up to the program. I had very big plans and lots of ideas about what I thought we could do and how we could do it. Um, as you'll see as I go through, however, I had probably not taken into account the big ideas and the plans that our students were going to have. What I thought was going to be a very teacher driven project, in fact, ended up being a very student driven project that had more twists and turns than a good novel really. Um, but has had long term um, and ongoing effects for our school. So very quickly, I realised that our students had a very strong voice and they were very passionate about what they wanted to do. So we are a Catholic school on Aboriginal land and we often talk to our students about being um, stewards of creation, caring for country, but unfortunately our school grounds probably weren't showing that. So at their suggestion, we surveyed our whole school to see what everyone else thought and how we might better um, do better for the environment. So we asked the students to nominate what they considered were the three most important things that we could do at a school level to bring about change. Our year five students jumped on board and they graphed our results and they were pretty overwhelming really. Our students felt very strongly about planting our own food gardens. They felt very strongly about helping to create a safe environment for threatened species. And they also wanted to do something about uh, reducing our food packaging and waste. So now we had a way forward. We thought that these, these would then become our project goals and they underpinned everything that we did from here on in. After looking closely at the sustainable development goals, we felt that our project probably most closely aligned at the time with number 15, life on the land. So. We started out in the gardens. When I tell my mother this story, she finds this very humorous because I have not a gardening bone in my body up until we started Creative Koalas. We were lucky enough to have pre-built garden beds already, so they just really hadn't been looked after. So we got out with Year 6 and they weeded and they prepared the beds. We invited a local lady, Melissa Fogarty, from Blue Boat Farm to come in and offer us some advice as novice gardeners. And this was just the beginning of a long list of expert collaborators who were going to help us on our journey. At the same time, we researched what we were going to plant. So this was great skill building for our budding gardeners as they had to consider the climate, the companion plants, the space and time we had. Some students possibly had visions of grandeur and thought we were going to plant potatoes and make potato chips. 
Uh, but when they realised that potatoes could take somewhere between about 12 and 14 weeks to grow, we had to revise this plan. So we divided the task up into um, small groups, small little research groups, and they all had to work collaboratively to come up with a, lot, a list of um, possible plants. So each group then had to present their uh, list to the class, along with the reasons why they had chosen each of their plants. Uh, we had much healthy discussion and healthy debate, you might say, um, and then our final decisions were made. When the time fan finally came to harvest, we had already um, added to a very considerable skill set. They had learned about saturating garden beds to prepare for seedlings, protecting infant plants by putting sugar cane around the base, they learnt tomatoes need staking and how to use soft ties to keep them up. And they had to devise a watering roster so they'd keep their plants alive. Sadly, we learnt that corn needs multiple plants to cross pollinate. So ours went to seed. And we also learnt that you can't plant beetroot too close together because they apparently need room to grow. But resilient they were, and they focused on their healthy crops of spring onions, capsicums, carrots, lettuce, snow peas, and enough tomatoes to last everybody a lifetime. So we talked to the students a lot about the Aboriginal way of life of only taking what you need from Mother Earth. So they learnt to only harvest what they were using and to leave the rest for growing. This also cut down on our wastage, which was something we were also uh, keen to avoid. They also learned a lot about what is ripe. They certainly found out how to test a tomato that is not ripe. And they learned how to twist a cucumber from its stem. They learned that lettuce grows really fast. There was lots of incidental learning along the way. It was about at this time that we connected with our next expert. And we were fortunate enough to be gifted a cooking kit from Oz Harvest. So Oz Harvest is a food rescue service in Australia that saves surplus food from ending up in landfill by delivering it to charities, which is then made into meals. So the kit that we were gifted included oh, about six frying pans, utensils, chopping boards, measuring cups, bowls, tea towels, everything we needed. So we talked to the kids and we decided we would cook. So we researched some recipes that would best utilise the plants that we were growing and we wrote step-by-step -step procedures that they had to follow. And again, the amount of incidental learning that came from this was phenomenal. <laughs> Fry pan safety, oven safety, food safety, measuring, how to use a grater without losing any skin off their fingers. We quickly worked out which students helped out at home when it came to washing up and which students had never held a tea towel in their life. They were so impressed with their finished products. From this, we learnt if you call it a muffin, it sells better than if you call it a quiche. We repeated the whole process the next week and we made mini tacos, which were also a sellout. Again, the incidental learning of budgeting, estimating costs, estimating quantity, handling money, counting money, marketing their products to ensure that our project was crossing very many curriculum areas. They utilised great leadership skills in the delegating of these tasks. And whilst not everyone was happy with their different roles, lots of kids wanted the glory of selling. Not many wanted the glory of cleaning. They were able to work out a system that drew on everybody's strengths. So another twist in our tail, we now felt like we were learning skills that really aligned with goal to zero hunger. So while this was all happening, something else was going on in our town. So as I'm sure many of you would already be aware, the koala is iconic to Australia. Uh, what you may not, however, realise is that this beautiful mammal is also on our endangered species list. So the proposed expansion of a local quarry near our school was all over the news at the time, and this was really deeply personal to us. So each week for 10 weeks, we worked in small groups to write strong persuasive texts to try and help save the koala habitats that were in our local suburb. We took our letters to Kate Washington, who is our local member in parliament, and we also posted them to Susan Lay, who is our Federal Environment Minister, to try and persuade her to vote against the quarry expansion. Unfortunately, the quarry development was given the go-ahead, 
and the kids were devastated to learn that their voices weren't enough. Everybody took this really hard and it was probably our first taste of real defeat. They had, we had very emotional students who felt very, um, they worked so hard to bring about change only to realise that they had not succeeded. And this was a really tough lesson in resilience. But we took this opportunity then to share the story of um, the starfish with our students. Now, I'm sure many of you may already have heard this story um, about a young girl who was walking along the beach where there were thousands of starfish had been washed up. And when she came to each starfish, she'd throw it back into the ocean and people were watching her with amusement. And she'd been doing it for some time when a man came up and asked her, you know, what she was doing and told her she couldn't possibly be making a difference and the girl was initially, you know, appeared to be very upset, but a few moments later she bent down and picked up another starfish and threw it out into the ocean and she looked up at the man and said, well, I made a difference for that one. So we shared this story with our students and they really took this to heart. So this just empowered us to do more. So we connected with Jane Lloyd-Jones from Hunter Local Land Services to come and talk to us about predators of local species. She brought along Pauline and Freddie from the Biodiversity Division of the Department of Planning, Industry and Environment, and they talked to us about the threatened species in our local area. Together, we came up with a list of 12 species, including birds, reptiles and mammals, that were at risk in the area immediately surrounding our school. So we gave this list to Year 4, who at the time just happened to be studying threatened species in the class, and we asked them to concentrate their research just on these 12. They made PowerPoint presentations, which they then had to go class to class and show the whole school. And we conducted a whole school vote to nominate which one species would be our school's new mascot. So year two were given the job of graphing our results. So slowly but surely, we were pulling the whole school into our Creative Koalas program. Overwhelmingly, the students and staff nominated the Hunter River Turtle as our school mascot. He was up against some pretty tough competition, I have to say, but there's just something about a turtle that appealed to everybody. So now we were moving into goal 14, life below the water. So we shared our results from our survey with Jane, again, from Hunter Local Land Services. So she then rallied a range of experts in their field to come to our school and offer a turtle day to our students. They got to test the local river water quality. We searched for water bugs. They made reporter interviews about turtles. They played a fox predation game. And they were lucky enough to get to meet a turtle, a frog, a possum, and a beautiful lace monitor lizard that Australian wildlife brought with them to display. So not only had we connected with a raft of new expert collaborators, but our mission was gaining traction in the local newspapers as well. So this was just the beginning of our love affair with turtles and the decision to donate the money that we had raised from the sale of our uh, muffins and tacos to the Australian Reptile Park was an easy one. Tim Faulkner gladly accepted our cheque, which will go towards supporting the turtles in the new Hunter River Turtle Enclosure that they had just built. I was lucky enough to travel down to the Reptile Park with these beautiful four students and present our cheque in person. And uh, we were given a tour of the park while we were there, which was amazing. So in May, 2021, we celebrated World Turtle Day. And again, we made a donation of over $500 this time to the Australian Reptile Park. We'll be recognising this day again, actually, next Monday at school. And this year, however, our money is going to be donated to Sea Shelter, a local volunteer-based charity who carry out ocean conservation in the Hunter region. So students will be coming out of uniform on Monday or dressing up as turtles if they can, and we'll be participating in turtle activities all day. So this is just an ongoing legacy of our participation in creative koalas. And of course, there was our koala. So I'm not quite sure why I hadn't learned my lesson by now, but at the time when I was speaking to my creative koalas teaching buddy, I kind of remember saying to her, are we really going to let the kids paint this? Like it was such a big part of our, our submission. Well, they designed and they collaborated and they justified every piece of art that went on him. And then they painted. And I have to tell you, boy, what a job they did. He is beautiful. So this 
is Hunter Billagura, which is the Hunter River turtle in the Gatung language of the local Waramai people. The koala who wanted to be a turtle, he has artwork on him depicting the good and bad of our environment for threatened species, the predators of turtles, our flourishing vegetable gardens, the sad story of the koala habitat we couldn't save, and the face of a warrior, because this is what our students have become. They have become biodiversity warriors. And I still look at him every day, and I am just amazed at the skills and talents of our students and just what they have achieved. Unfortunately, time got the better of us and we were not able to address our last goal of reducing our waste effectively. We made the difficult decision to leave this goal as pending because we didn't want to do it and not do it well, just to tick a box. So wrappers from packaged foods continue to be a big issue for our school and the amount that we contribute to landfill. Lucky then, I suppose, that we have signed up for Creative Koalas 2022. So here's a sneak peek of what we will be doing. From a recent audit of our waste management processes at school, we horrifyingly discovered that we contribute 23 240 litre wheelie bins a week to landfill. At the time, we only had a choice on the playground of the red landfill bins and the yellow bins, which were mainly just for paper and cardboard. Couldn't believe that this is what we were sending to landfill every term. This is what that equated to, was this big tanker every term of rubbish. So this was enough to spur us all into action. We are now trialling a waste sorting initiative that ensures that our bottles and poppers go to a cash back recycling station, that our soft plastics like Glad Wrap and biscuit packets are going to a red cycle program that our local supermarkets are in port of, and that we only send to landfill what can't be sent anywhere else. So our year six students are driving this again, along with my creative koalas teaching buddy. And every Wednesday and Friday, the kids have to empty these bins. They sort through the purple and the blue bins to make sure that the rubbish hasn't been contaminated. And then they bag it up to be collected by parents for delivery for where it needs to go. We purchased all of these beautiful wildlife stickers to put onto our bins just to remind all of our students why we are doing what we're doing. Then they report back every morning on assembly to let us know how we're doing. And this has resulted in some very interesting feedback. We all know now that maggots love lasagna and that the many wrappers on our current ice blocks in our canteen are not recyclable. So I feel like this might be what we're looking into because the kids aren't happy. So as Lynn mentioned, the main components of the program fall into three categories, giving students agency and voice, collaboration and teamwork, and well-being, resilience and leadership. After the close of our 2020 program, we talked to our students about their involvement to evaluate our participation. And I'm pleased to say that all the questions that are on the screen in front of you, they answered yes to all of this. They very much felt like they had been heard. They very much felt like they drove the initiative and that we really were just along to guide them along the way. As to well-being, resilience and leadership, there were so many opportunities for this that they're really hard to list. From the disappointment of not, having, of not saving the koala habitat to the delight of directly helping the Hunter River turtle, we all agreed that we touched on all of these pillars. We were even able to eventually have a little bit of a giggle about the managing conflict pillar after they had initially struggled in the delegation of who was doing the cleaning up. And then finally to collaboration. So look, I've included an image of um, some of the students in this mind map because there was certainly a lot of collaborating from them. When I look back now at the number of experts who joined our journey, it's quite humbling really. Um, that so many people could work together with us on this journey um, and, and create such amazing outcomes, particularly for the Hunter River Turtle. So this was our participation in 2020. Did it snowball into something 
much bigger than I thought it was going to. Absolutely, it did. But as I said, the the ongoing legacy and benefit of the program in our school, it, we, we are still, only yesterday morning, we had students on our assembly talking about the polystyrene noodle cups that are served in our canteen, and they're not happy. We are They are driving change in our school, and it is something that I think we can all be proud of from our participation. So it was a very exciting journey for us. Now, I wonder, I did organise um, a little kahoot for everyone to participate in. If you've got your phones with you, on your phone, if you want to search kahoot.it, so it's K-A-H-O-O-T dot it. So on your um, device, you're just going to click the screen that answers the question. So Creative Koalas is a competition on TV, an action learning program, a reality TV show, or a koala sanctuary in Australia. Very nice to know that we all know that one. So our iconic koala. He's a mammal. We often He's often referred to as a koala bear, but in actual fact, he is a mammal. Question four. Sixteen. So what are they inspired to become? Very nice. How many trees across the world are cut down daily to make toilet paper? 27,000. The main outcomes for students participating creative koalas. True or false, the koala is listed as endangered in large parts of Australia. You're all very good students. How many different species are at risk due to climate change? <laughs> that was evenly divided. One million. Some coastal towns in both the US and Australia are turning off their street lights to... Help turtle hatchlings. Our students were fascinated by this because they're disoriented by the street lights. True or false, there's no such thing as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Number 12, starting point in designing a change project. is admitting how much we don't know. It is definitely a student-driven project. I've learned my lesson. Positive messaging. And the last one, Painting this fiberglass koala offers our students the opportunity to stimulate. Oh, so without a drum roll, please, let's see how quick she was on the finger. That is the end of my part. I will hand back over to Lynn. Thank you very much. Now, we'd like to invite everybody across the world to in join us. And we want to hear from schools and teachers across the world what they are doing and we're going to show you what we're going to do with this information. On the Creative Koalas homepage, everyone can find the 10 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that we invite students in Australia to investigate and create a behaviour change project around. 
For this exercise, we would like you to hover over goal 15 and click on that goal. And we're going to show you what that page looks like. At the top of that page, you will see a series of little koala icons. And when you click on each of those icons, it takes you to, in the first one, information about goal 15, life on the land. It shares with everyone the global context, what the United Nations are trying to achieve globally. Then it shares with you what we're doing in Australia. And then what we do then is we showcase all of the fabulous schools that we are working with in Australia on the website to be inspiration and role models to other students. What we'd like to do um, as a result of having this opportunity to talk to educators across the world is invite you to click on the last one, which says, what can you do? And what we would like you to do is share with us by emailing me at this email address, case studies of fantastic things that are happening in your schools. Our commitment to you is, is to select a number of those case studies and put them on our website. So not only are we showcasing what's happening in Australia, we're going to be showcasing what's happening in schools across the world. So thank you everyone for giving Kristen and I this opportunity to share with you what's happening in Australian schools. And we're really excited now to be giving you an opportunity for you to share what's happening with schools across the world. And I'd like to hand over to Amaya and Nicole to share with you what are the next events coming up in the global learning and agriculture calendar. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we just want to say, say, first say thank you to everyone who was able to come. We really appreciate it. And we know that you all live very busy lives. Um, coming up next on the 25th is Glag Reads uh, event of learning through storytelling, which is going to be super fun, super interesting. We have author Roger Thoreau coming to speak and it's going to be so much fun. So we hope that everyone can go. And then on June 1st, Glag Creates has our coaching session with OP McCubbins on Rocket Books, which everyone should have gotten in their Glag boxes earlier this year. And a note on uh, OP's session, there is a uh, tutorial that he has created and it's up on Whova. So you can watch that tutorial at any time to prepare for his coaching session. And uh, he has some really, really useful tools and tricks. And even if you didn't get one of those rocket books or don't have access to one, he also has solutions on how you can incorporate uh, those materials and that resource, uh, even if you don't have one. So if you have one, bring it. If not, come with your mind open. And uh, he's really amazing at what he's going to teach you. So with that, again, thank you, Kristen and Lynn. This was really phenomenal. Um, Kristen, I want to just come be at your school for a month or two just to learn from you. This has been incredible. Um, and I hope this brings up a lot of questions that people want to talk about and create some discussion. Um, if you're watching this at a later time and something inspired you, I don't know how something on here wouldn't have inspired you. I have a million ideas myself right now. Um, let's get that discussion going in the Whova space so that we can talk about it. And you can connect there with Kristen and Lynn who are you know, really, really open and ready to help people join in on, on this great creative journey. And um, over the summer, we will be offering coaching sessions. You can see it on the main calendar where you can meet with them again and ask them questions and talk about how you'll incorporate this into your classroom. So everyone here tonight, thank you so much for joining. Everyone who may be watching this at a later date, thank you for watching. And I hope you're inspired and you're ready to make some creative changes to uh, your curriculum. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.